So what is the number one thing that causes people to fail when they're trying to become developers or web designers or web developers, iOS developers or Ruby developers? I don't know why you want to become a Ruby developer. That's a joke. Okay, what is the number one thing I see that causes people to fail? Giving up, giving up. This is a cliche, so I was kind of reluctant to make this video because it's kind of cliche, but let me tell you, it's something that uh, is pretty much um, what it is because at the end of the day, if you're just consistent, you will make it. There's no question about it. Those who don't make it is just because they give up. So don't give up. That being said, let me give you a couple of tips that's going to supercharge your learning process. Number one, accept the fact that you are going to hit roadblocks. You are going to hit situations when you're learning how to code that uh, you're going to have problems. That's normal because you're learning something new. The brain, it takes a time to assimilate all this new information. So you have to let it percolate through the brain tissue so it becomes something that will become natural, easy for you, just like language, just like the spoken language. So that's number one. You have to uh, expect that you're going to hit roadblocks. Number two, when you do hit those inevitable roadblocks, you have to just give yourself some time. What I suggest to people is when they do hit a wall, a roadblock, you try for half an hour or so and you just don't get it, you don't understand you're having problems, take a break, walk away, move on to something else, or take a day off, give your mind a chance to rest and assimilate the knowledge, and then come back to it. What you're going to find a lot of the times when you do hit something that's really hard, if you just give your brain a chance to process it, you come back, all of a sudden it will be pretty easy. You'll see that in real world development, by the way. It happens all the time here from experienced developers all the time. They come, they hit a bug, they can't figure out what the problem is, they, they can't get it to work, they work on it for two, three hours, it just won't work. So what do they do? Smart developers know, just pack it up, do something else, work on a different problem, or maybe go do some exercise, take a day off, come back, and then oftentimes the next day you, you sit down and you go, oh, that's the problem, boom, and you fix it. Same thing with learning. So number one, you're gonna hit roadblocks. Number two, when you do hit roadblocks, you keep trying. If it's not working out after whatever, half an hour, an hour, whatever it is, and you, or if you're getting a headache or you're getting frustrated, walk away, walk away. This is proven in psychology. There's moments where our, our brains can peak perform and there are moments where our brain cannot perform very well at all. Now, my philosophy for the last 800,000 years has been, not that long, it's only been 800 years, has been when you're in peak performance mode, you work, and when you're off, don't work, rest. Just like when you're training as an athlete, working out your body, the rest period is as important as the training period. You have to give your body time to rest. One of my physiotherapists used to be the top physiotherapist with our local professional football team and the Alouettes and it's Canadian football. Anyhow, and she's saying the number one mistake people make is that they overtrain. They don't give their bodies a chance to rest. The body has to recover from the beating you give it when you're working out, right? It, has, it, has a, it needs a chance to recover from that. When you're learning something new, like software development, programming, web programming, coding, whatever, you have to give your brain a chance to assimilate that knowledge before you can move on. Now, the great thing is that when you're first starting out, it's hard. But as you progress, as you train your mind more and more in terms of thinking like a coder, the more and more you understand code and the processes and so forth, the easier it's going to get, I promise you. So understand, third rule, when you're first starting out, it's the hardest time. It's the hardest time. But you give yourself a chance, you know, slowly, slowly, you're going to simulate knowledge, and then it starts to accelerate, and then it's going to be very fast. At some point, you're going to get to a point where, at some point, you're going to get to a point, yeah, where Learning a new language or new technology, generally speaking, will be really, really easy. That's the way it is. So in my own career as a developer, whether working on my own projects or freelancing, I have used nine different programming languages over that period of time, 
on all these different projects, not on one project, but all, all these different projects. And after I learned my third language, when I hit my third programming language, it just became really easy to get productive with a particular language. That's how it gets. And, you know, then four, five, six, seven, it gets just easier and easier and easier. And as I said in other videos, as you become more advanced, you stop thinking of yourself as a Python programmer or as a Java programmer, as a PHP programmer, etc. What you start thinking of yourself as, you start thinking of yourself as a developer, as a programmer. And you look at all these different languages, all the different frameworks that are out there, you, you just look at them as tools that you're going to implement. Anyway. Back to the subject at hand, the number one thing that causes people to fail at becoming a developer is just giving up. Don't give up. I think on a deep lizard brain level, I think people understand, I think we understand how powerful and important it is to have tenacity and consistency. That's why most people like the underdog. The underdog, somebody who doesn't seem to have that natural talent or is going against great big odds, but they persist, they keep going, they get knocked down, they come back, they get knocked down, they come back. Those are the uh, characters in popular and superhero movies that we like. We like those people who are able to come back after getting uh, beaten down, after dealing with adversity. That is such a common theme. And I think that is so popular is because our lizard brains our lower but super powerful brain understands at a very basic visceral level that consistency and persistence is what wins the game. In fact, one of my uh, best teachers in martial arts who was a uh, well, boxer, records, amateur record 77-2, which is like world-class, unbelievably good fighter. And he talked about that as well. For him, the thing that he respected the most was people who are persistent and consistent. That was the key to success. And this guy was world class. He would have been a world champion if he decided to become a pro fighter. But for whatever political reasons, he didn't. But that's another story. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Again, I was kind of reluctant to put this video out because it's kind of a cliche, but I think people, when they're under pressure and the stress of learning something new, doing something new, because our brains don't like that, generally speaking, even though it's good for it, we need to be reminded of some basic truths, persistence. So the number one reason people don't succeed in becoming developers is because they give up. And that goes with anything else in life, by the way. All right. I hope that helps. Bye-bye.